So now we're going to do uh, multiple lexicons, one single book. And the book that we're going to use is Pride and Prejudice. And we're going to do it, as I said, using all the three lexicons. So it's pretty easy to see how we get the text of this one book. Say Pride and Prejudice is tidy books, filter book equals Pride and Prejudice. And there you go. Okay, now remember, tidy books had already uh, broken down the books into individual words, added the line numbers, chapter numbers, all of that was already done. Okay, so all we need to do now is to simply filter it and we have Pride and Prejudice. Okay, so you've got as expected the title of the book, the name of the book, the line number within the book, chapter number within the book and the word that occurs. Okay, so of course as you can see here Pride and Prejudice, all of them occur on the very first line, that's just the title line. Uh, the second line uh, was empty, the third line has by, and so on and so on. So this is just what we had uh, got earlier. Okay, so now uh, let's take a look at Pride and Prejudice joined with the AFIN lexicon. Right, remember we're going to use one book, three lexicons. Right? So we're going to create three different uh, tables with the appropriate joinings. Okay, so AFIN is Pride and Prejudice, inner join, get sentiments, AFIN. And then, uh, of course, we are doing the usual group by line number divided by 100. And then we are summarizing the sentiment for each, uh, each group, right? The group being the uh, chunk of 80 uh, lines in this particular case. Okay, uh, so therefore, you will get a summary of the score, right? The reason we are doing it like this is that, as we saw earlier, AFIN gives a sentiment score for every word. Right? Some of the scores are negative, some of the scores are positive. So the total sentiment is simply just the sum of all the scores. So that's a very simple thing to do with the AFIN lexicon. Okay, And we're going to see this step by step. Okay, And then we also want to add a column to indicate, okay, uh, the method is AFIN. Okay? So that's because for, uh, for, every, uh, for the book, we're going to have three different sentiment uh, analysis. So we want to identify the particular analysis is done by which lexicon. Okay, so this we saw this here. So here we are just showing you again step by step what's going on. So we took the book Pride and Prejudice, joined it with the sentiments and this is what you get. Okay, so you've got the word and you've got its sentiment score because that's how AFIN does the job. Okay, so again we've got uh, uh, this part then we're going to of course next step we're going to do the grouping. So at this point, all we have done is associated a sentiment number with every word that occurs in the AFIN lexicon. Okay, so now let's go one step further. So let's see, we've done this and then let's group by index equals line number divided by 80. Okay, that is we're doing uh, chunks of 80 lines. Okay, so when we do a group by, what we're going to get is of course it says, okay, uh, the group, but otherwise nothing uh, looks very different. Okay. Uh, uh, okay, and then we've got the score as uh, we've got it here, the original score, and then the sum of the scores. <clears throat> okay, so we've got the scores for every individual word. So then once you have the score, we are doing the summarization of the sentiment by score, so this will give us the summary. Okay, so we are saying for this particular index, because right now we are not interested in the actual word itself, right? So we are just doing group by index and summarize. So it's going to show you the index, which is again the chunk of 80 lines, and it's going to show you the uh, total net sentiment for that particular index. Right? So we are seeing that initially it starts off uh, the first 80 lines, the sentiment, overall sentiment is a positive 29. The next 80 lines, the overall sentiment is actually zero. Right? It's quite possible that those were, uh, that was an empty page or something, I don't know. Or it could turn out that indeed it was on balance neutral. Okay, and so on. So now we have the uh, sentiment by index. Right? And then of course we are simply adding one more column to say that the method is AFIN, so this gets added. Okay, so AFIN tells us the complete uh, sentiment analysis using the uh, uh, AFIN lexicon for this book, Pride and Prejudice. 
okay of course going by our goals what we need to do is to do uh, for the same book pride and prejudice we want to do the sentiment analysis by uh, the remaining two lexicons uh, you know nrc and bing so we'll see how to do that okay now nrc and bing as we saw earlier both of them classify sentiments uh, uh, in fact uh, uh, bing classifies sentiments as simply positive or negative so there we'll have to do the net positive versus negative thing like we did earlier. And NRC classifies the sentiments uh, in many different ways, right? It associates uh, very specific sentiment words with every word that we are trying to categorize. Right? But among those two words are two words called positive and negative. So that's what we'll be using, right? So because those two things are somewhat similar, uh, we are combining their analysis like this. So we are saying being an NRC is bind rows, that is, we're going to create two uh, tables and we're going to combine them, combine them the rows wise into one single table, right? So we say bind rows and then we say take pride and prejudice, join it with the Bing sentiment, right? And mutate method equals Bing at all, right? We, we want to have the method along with uh, every word, which method was used to, to perform it, okay? So this is what it does, okay? So we've got Bing, uh, positive, negative, etc., etc. Okay, pride and prejudice. Pride, positive, being at all. And then prejudice, negative, being at all. This is for the particular line number. Okay, and uh, so that's what's going on here. For every line, uh, for every word, basically, we are just adding the, uh, the sentiment. And next, we are going to do the same thing with NRC. But NRC has many sentiments out of which we want to take only positive and negative, right? We're not interested in things like fear and anger and anxiety and all of those other things, right? So we join it and then say, well, I'm going to keep only those words which are in, in uh, which are either positive or negative. And then of course we add the method, mutate method. Okay, so what this is going to do is to create this. Okay, so you've got positive, negative, positive, negative uh, in both the cases, right? So you've got the line number, chapter, word, and for every word, we've got uh, the sentiment associated with the word, okay? And the lexicon that was used to create that particular sentiment, okay? And then what we have done is we've created one table with this and this combined, put together. And then we are counting it by method, right? Method, remember, was NRC, Bing et al., and so on. Okay, so that, that's, the, that's what we get here. And then of course, like before, because we got positive and negative, we spread it out into two columns and then we do the net sentiment, positive minus negative. Okay, so now uh, we've got uh, this data frame available to us. So now all we have to do is to combine it back with AFIN because being an NRC, we had one, but now we are doing combine all of these together, right? So we'll have one major thing, which looks like, like this, but with all the three lexicons. Okay, and of course we're talking only about one book. So we get that, and then we can go ahead and do a ggplot, right? We're saying ggplot, uh, and we want to plot index, which is the chunk number on the x-axis, the net sentiment on the y-axis, and then we want to uh, put the color of the bars. We're going to do a bar chart. We want to put the color of the bar based on the method that we are using for the sentiment. And then we are doing a geom bar, a bar plot. And of course, we are doing it by method. We're doing facet wrap n call equals one, which means uh, first, uh, you know, the, the, the three books will appear one below the other as one single column. Okay, so if you do that, this is what uh, you see. Right, you see the index 0, 50, 100 because uh, it's the same book. We broke it up into chunks of 80 lines, right? So obviously, this is all going to be uh, similar, right? And then you see this is how the sentiments were computed using the AFN uh, lexicon. This is how the sentiments were computed using the Bing lexicon. It's interesting to see how there is actually quite a bit of correlation uh, between those two, right? So wherever this is going negative, this is also going negative. A very close coordination. Right? Except, of course, here this is showing quite a bit of negativity here, whereas this is not capturing uh, that much of negativity. 
Okay, that's because uh, I think AFN was the one that had numbers, right? So, or this is the one that had numbers. One of them had the numbers, so it was a little more, uh, a little more precise, I would suppose. Okay, so maybe we could make a general statement saying that the Bing probably uh, shows the negative sentiments in a little more stark way than than AFN. I don't know. Maybe that's possible, right? See here, there's no negatives, but this one has some negatives. And here the negatives appear to be a little bigger, like it's here too. Okay, so there's some differences between uh, these things. Whereas when you look at NRC, there's almost no negative at all, right? But overall flow in terms of ups and downs uh, looks very similar across all the three lexicons. This doesn't have negatives. Of course, we already know why that is the case. That is because the NRC lexicon actually has many different words that it uses. Out of those words, we chose only to keep positive and negative, right? So, uh, for example, in the other lexicons, words that evoked fear or words that evoked anxiety, all of these might have been classified as negative sentiments. Whereas here, we simply ignored all of those, right? So effectively, by filtering it by only for positive and negative, uh, we actually lost out probably on quite a few of the negative sentiments. And that is why this is showing a predominantly positive sentiment. Okay, we could fix that by taking every word of uh, the NRC lexicon and then saying if each of those words is actually positive or negative, right? So that way we won't be we won't have to filter it out. We'll just be able to say for each thing whether it's positive or negative. And I would suspect that if we did that, then the results here would be also be more in line with uh, with these two approaches. Okay, so what this is showing us is the fact that uh, we could pretty much use any of the three lexicons to perform sentiment analysis, right? They all give fairly consistent kind of results. Okay, this is what I just discussed. Why is NRC more positive than the others? That's because of this. You can take a look at the code and you'll see uh, what's going on. Okay, now another thing we might want to do is to look at the contribution of the specific words to the sentiment, right? In other words, we are saying, okay, uh, which of the words uh, contributed most to the positive sentiments in the book and which of the words contributed most to the negative sentiment in the book. Okay, so here we are doing it with uh, with Bing. Bing word counts. Uh, we are doing taking tidy books. This time we are again considering all the books and joining with Bing, then counting the word, uh, we're counting by word and sentiment. Right, so in other words, we'll have a particular uh, word positive, given word positive, given word negative, and so on, right? So what this will do is it will allow us to separate out the words by uh, positive and negative sentiments, right? So we grouped it, so we ungroup it, okay? And then uh, we are doing the, if you look at Bing word counts, this is what you get, right? So miss was negative and it contributed 1855. We are seeing it in order because we said sort equals true, right? So we are seeing here, uh, uh, this is ordered by word count and we are seeing for each word how many times it was used and what its associated sentiment was. Okay, so now it's very easy to plot the thing separately. So we'll want to do two bar plots, one by positive and one by negative. If we're taking the top 10 words, so we are saying Bing word counts group by sentiment, which is what allows us to separate all the positives and all the negatives, right? And for each one, Let's take the top 10, okay? Uh, take the top 10 words, and then uh, we are doing again like before we did, reorder the words so that the ordering the, uh, of the words is not alphabetical, but it is by count, okay? This is what we had done uh, in the previous week. I had explained exactly how this thing works, so you could go there and take a look at that. Right? Then we are ready to plot, right? So plot the word, okay? And then uh, uh, take the count, and then use the sentiment, uh, fill, fill it with the color based on the sentiment, doing a bar chart saying stat is identity, and we are doing facet wrap, right? That's because we want uh, by sentiment. We want a separate bar plot per sentiment. Okay, and just the labels, no x-axis label and coordinate flip. Okay, so this is what we get. So here we are able to say, okay, among the negative sentiments, the word miss contributed most to it. Okay, among the positive sentiment, the words well and good contributed most to the positive sentiments and so on. 
Okay. Now, what this is showing us is the fact that uh, quite easily, you know, once we break up uh, stuff into words, text into words, uh, we can do all sorts of word frequency plots and all of these things quite easily, right? Now, what this is doing is it is giving us a kind of an X-ray view into a large body of text, right? Uh, this is, might be particularly useful if, uh, let's say, somebody submits an essay and you want to find out is this essay really submitted by this person, right? Now, if you take many pieces of work done by this person and you plot uh, their word usage patterns or their sentiment patterns and so on, right? You would expect to find that there is actually quite a lot of correlation between uh, uh, the pr items produced by a particular person. Because after all, they have a, a certain fixed vocabulary that they are uh, conversant with, that they are comfortable with, right? And when they write, let's say, two or three pages of text, you will find that if you compare uh, two pages they wrote uh, one year ago and let's say two pages they wrote today, and if you looked at the word usage patterns, you can expect to find really that there's a lot of similarity, okay? On the other hand, if you see two pieces purportedly written by the same person, but drastically differing in terms of the word usage patterns, okay, then uh, you have some reason to suspect whether this was really written by that person or not. Okay, so you could do those kinds of things as well, right? So here we, I've just shown you some techniques uh, by which you can uh, uh, take some text and then generate some interesting patterns out of those texts, right? So it's sort of X-ray view into texts. Okay, another important way in which uh, people use uh, text uh, text analysis or text mining is to create what are called word clouds. Okay, that is you've got a large body of text and you want to find out by and large which are the words or phrases, or in our, in our case words, which seem to appear more often in this, in the text, right? Of course, we saw how we could do that with a bar chart, but bar chart allows only so many words to be kept, right? A word cloud allows us to put in many more words, okay? So let's take a concrete example. Okay, there's a package called word cloud that can generate, help us to generate word cloud, okay? And then we are doing library word cloud, of course, and then the next command is tidy books. Now these should appear on separate lines. They just run run into each other. So we are taking uh, tidy books and anti join stop words. That is, as as you know from before, we are just getting rid of all the commonly used stop words which we are not into, like uh, uh, the an etc. No, will won't things like that. Those which we don't really want to analyze. Uh, so we are getting rid of those words. And then we are generating a count by individual word. And then we are using the word cloud, right? This count word is going to give us, obviously, for each word, how many times it occurred, okay? And then we are saying, plot the word cloud. Word cloud, word n, n being how many times it occurred, word being the actual word. And we are saying, plot a maximum of 100 words, okay? So if you did that, so in this case, we are take using uh, all the books by uh, Jane Austen, right? So this is what a word cloud looks like, okay? So you're able to see here the word is, uh, you know, miss is the word as we know from before that occurred most frequently. Time is also a word that occurred quite frequently and so on and so on, okay? So once again, this gives us a different kind of a view into a large body of text, right? So, so, so again, going back to our customer uh, service example or something, you want to say, okay, uh, which are the words that people are using most in, in all of the things they say about us, okay? So, for example, if it turns out that a highly negative word comes up as one of the big ones, then you know you have a problem. There's a perception problem, right? Uh, on the other hand, if you see lots of positive words coming, then you say, okay, we, we seem to be doing all right, okay? Same thing may apply to how uh, a university could use this, right? So, you've got faculty evaluations, students are putting in a lot of free text. So, you could combine all of this and create a word cloud and see, okay, broadly speaking, what is the overall feeling that people have about, uh, about the level of teaching that's going on, okay? So that's an idea of word cloud. Uh, now, you can also break this word cloud idea a little bit further by saying, let's put all the positive words in one color, all the negative words in another color, and also uh, put them all on one side or the other side, okay? So let's do that again here. So we are doing, again, get sentiments ping, 
uh, we are counting the word but this time we are counting the word by sentiment okay uh, and then we are using this uh, so we want to uh, remove the positive I mean move the positive and negative sentiments into different columns okay we can either use a cast or of course we could have used uh, uh, separate right so we could have done either of those uh, so not uh, yeah we could have used separate in any case what we are getting is this particular result okay and then there is a function called comparison cloud okay so if you do comparison dot cloud and we say this then you get uh, this kind of a thing right so here at the bottom you have all the positive words and the top you have all the negative words okay shown in different colors so of course miss is the biggest used word and it is a negative word so you can find out from this uh, which are the most common positive words that people are using for us and which are the most common negative words they are using for us okay interestingly even though the largest word is a negative word here we can generally see that there seem to be more positive words and also in terms of size the positive words seem to be uh, in bigger font okay so it looks like the overall sentiment is kind of positive and of course we know that right when we did the sentiment analysis we saw that uh, very few times it dips below the uh, dips on to the negative side most of the books uh, for all the books most of the time things are running in the positive okay so this is another way to uh, to summarize large volumes of text okay so that completes our discussion of uh, sentiment analysis and in fact it completes our discussion of uh, text analytics or text mining.